Hey everyone, this is Gleb, and today I'm doing something a little bit unusual for this video. Recently, Rainer Hankamp made a presentation about Cypress and Playwright. And as someone who compared Cypress and Playwright in my course, I was really looking forward to flip through the slides. The slides are public, I'm gonna link it in the description of this video. The code and the application is also public, so uh, Reiner um, graciously put a public repo and I forked it so that I could maybe give my spin on his Cypress solutions. So the original version is in main branch and my version is not updated. If you leap, flip uh, through the slides, you can find all sorts of tests, kind of showing how two test runners approach the same problem of testing the UI of a modern web application, including how to make page objects, provide test data, uh, create custom commands, and so on. So some of the test commands and tests looked a little bit convoluted to me, to be honest. Uh, for example, adding a query with the name test ID to simplify accessing elements by the data test attribute um, use the internal sign now command, which you should never do, right? Like I use it in just one or two places in my plugins. Like, so I will go through a couple of tests that Reiner has, and I'm gonna show how I would write them. Not to say anything bad about Reiner's implementation, but maybe show a slightly more elegant and a solution that I would use. Okay, so why don't we start with the first test? Um, I already have uh, Cypress open. We're going to use Electron. Uh, the spec is called init, so it should be passing. The app is running at localhost 4200, and the test finds the customer's menu, clicks on it, finds the customer row with Letitia, um, clicks on it, and goes to the customer details, clears the name, enters corrected name, and you can see before and after, and then submits it, and then the updated text should be there. Just a few points, uh, this test is great. I don't object to it at all. Let me move it to the right. Okay, so visiting an empty string always looks weird to me, so I usually just visit a slash. If you just wanna go to the base URL, I prefer using a slash. I think it's much, much re more readable. Uh, notice we're accessing an element here by its data test attribute, right? It finds the button customers highlighted right here when we hover. And we had commands right here. And one of the custom commands was test ID that used that sign now internal implementation. Much, much simpler. You want to access an element by test ID, so you would use test ID, and then you just give a value of an attribute. Let's just make sure it works. It does. So the implementation could be add and then return site get because what you're really doing is this, right? That's all you have to do. Like don't try to make it more complicated. And site get under the hood is a query, so you get a query command. So let's quickly maybe eh, we don't have to write it. Well, our thing in this particular implementation, notice that we're making several transitions from one page to another. So when we click on the customers. The new URL is slash customer. Here's what I would do. Anytime you transition to a new page, I would confirm that you're on that page before you do anything else. So in this case, it should be customer, okay? So it's nice and clear, and then for sure you're on a new page. Because what happens sometimes is that you think the page has transitioned, but it still is on an old page when the next command runs and grabs an element or makes an assertion and it passes accidentally or doesn't pass. So anytime you expect the page to go from one page to another, you should verify it. Uh, for example, this one, right? Uh, click on the particular customer, you would say location, path name. Well, you don't know if it should be equal, right? Because you know the ID but you can use regular expression. So should match regular expression, uh, customer and one or two digits. Why, why do I have problems entering regular expression today? Okay, so the URL matches customer and number. And the final one again should go back to the 
customer before we confirm role customer. All right, um, so this was the first test. Why don't we move to the next one? And the next one, I think, confirms the number of holidays. So I'm gonna click on specs, go to the holidays. So what's happening here, it loads the holidays page and it confirms that there are nine of them. And how does it get the nine, the number nine? It makes a side request API call to the holiday from the body gets the length. So it probably returns the, all the holidays as a JSON array, stores it in a local variable, then gets the number of cards on the holidays and confirms the number. Okay, so again, notice we are not confirming we're on the right page. So right here should equal holidays plural, okay? We can also move it to the page object method, right? So where is it defined? So this is holidays, page object. No, this is not it. This is in a source. Let's see palm side menu open. Uh, Ah, that would be a conditional. We don't want to do that. It's probably simpler just to do it here. Okay, but here's a simplification. Okay, so imagine we're getting a holiday count. We don't see it until we are all the way on the page and we use it in assertion. So what you can do is this. You can grab from the response object its body length. And then you can actually confirm should be a number and then you get uh, this count right and you are using it right here okay so you create a then pyramid but it's fine um notice nine should be a number okay you can use greater than if you know for sure there are some holidays that should be there but here's another thing you don't need to get the number of cards just to confirm the number of cards on the page you can say have length holiday count. Okay, that's it. Kind of nice um, implicit assertion. And another thing, notice we already have a before each hook where we're visiting the page. Why don't we move side request there? And then we can save this value that we get as an alias. And the great thing about before each hook that it completes completely before the test starts running. So the holidays count will be set by the time the test starts. And if you want to access this holidays count, the easiest way is to use a function callback because then, actually uh, we can move assertion also here. Then we don't need anything. This value will be available like this as a property on the text content or context object. And ESLint complains here, all it wants is for us to access it like this. Perfect, much, much simpler, no complicated that then or assertions. Okay, I think this is enough for today and I will release another video where I talk about the last large spec that confirms the number of customers and also tries to add and delete one, okay? So I will link the source code that I showed in the description of this video.